we're in a global economy, uh, and products, many products can be made in many places around the world. Uh, and an important part of Americans, uh, America's competitive uh, future is to produce a healthy, well-educated workforce. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the importance of job training and education in today's economy. Millions of American workers are still struggling in the aftermath of the Great Recession. Those who lose their jobs after years in the workforce and are lucky enough to find new positions often earn far less than they did before. And undereducated workers earn less than those with college degrees. Good job training programs could put more people back to work and help the nation prosper, states Hamilton Project Director Michael Greenstone. Last several decades have been very hard for many Americans, uh, especially those uh, who don't have a college degree. Uh, one measure of that is uh, the median earnings of someone who has a high school degree have declined by 60 percent uh, over the last several decades. Uh, it, it's an unimaginable number. It puts their earnings back at the levels of the 1950s. Uh, and so there's been a trend for people who don't have a lot of education that hasn't been good. And then that's been exacerbated uh, by the Great Recession. Uh, and the Great Recession has also produced another set of people who e research suggests are going to have a hard time in the coming years. And those are people who lost long-term jobs. One thing that I think people have not paid sufficient attention to is 7 million people lost jobs that they held for three years or longer. And the reason that is so important is there's very clear evidence that what we can expect in, for those people in the coming years is that due to longer, due to periods of unemployment and then becoming reemployed uh, at lower wages than they had before, on average they can expect to lose about $100,000 uh, over the course of their life. And if you think about that, that's an enormous amount of money for most people. Uh, the average price of a house in the United States is about $150,000. So it's like losing two-thirds of a house. Uh, when you put that all together, the 7 million people and $100,000, it means that there's a set of people who, not just due to the immediate aftermath of the Great Recession, but due to, it, due to earning lower wages in the coming years, are going to lose on net about $800 billion. Job training can play an important role in helping them reclaim some of those losses. So are you suggesting that job training could really help these two populations in particular? Job training, albeit different kinds of job training for the two groups of people, uh, can play an important role in helping them participate uh, in economic growth going forward. In the case of the less skilled, uh, finding ways to connect uh, to the labor force, uh, there's some new evidence that really didn't exist even five or ten years ago saying these folks, uh, if they participate in particular programs, can see substantial improvements in their earnings over time. And what's very exciting about that is we had job training programs for a long time, but we just didn't have this evidence about what would work and what didn't. And in the, in the last several years, there's uh, been some really exciting evidence that indicates how these folks can un uh, participate in improving their skills in ways that will allow them to earn more. We have two excellent uh, proposals from the Hamilton Project that uh, build on this new body of evidence. And that new body of evidence didn't exist five years ago. It didn't exist ten years ago. And I think there was rightly some reluctance about spending a lot of money on programs where the evidence base wasn't there. And for the first time uh, in, in several decades, we can now point to job training programs that have a proven track record and that proof comes from the highest standards of evidence. Expound on those findings, um, if you would. Again, there's these two groups of people that uh, one should, I think, think of distinctly. Uh, one are uh, people who somehow have kind of fallen through the cracks of the traditional educational system. Uh, and there, the proposal has very clear ideas on ways to connect those uh, people to community colleges or to high schools and then to industry. And then the second is for displaced workers. Uh, and that, uh, and those are people who've held a job for a long period of time. And one key feature of the proposal uh, that we released is kind of empowering a set of people who are in uh, Department of Labor one-stop career shops to help them give the proper advice uh, to people like, you should take this course uh, because it will help you get this kind of job and the returns of this, th that course are this. And that, I think that kind of knowledge is not, people haven't had that knowledge at their fingertips. Well, what about WIA, the Government's Workforce Investment Act? That does exactly what and how does job training 
complement what WIA does. WIA or WIA is focused mostly on job search assistance, and that's pretty effective. It helps people get reemployed quicker, but it doesn't, un it doesn't address the fundamental problem, and the fundamental problem is a skills problem for many workers, uh, where due to no fault of their own, uh, you know, some new industry has emerged in a foreign country that basically puts them out of work. Uh, and uh, they, their skills are no longer perfectly suited uh, for the American economy. And so while WIA is very effective at getting people reemployed quickly, what we also need to be able to do is help people refresh their skills in a way that allows them to compete in what is truly a global economy. Well, as with everything, there has to be a price tag. So how do we pay for job training programs? Right now, there's kind of a catch-as-catch-can approach to this. Uh, and some of it comes uh, from community colleges, some of it comes from high schools, some of it comes uh, from the private sector. And what, in a recent paper that uh, the Hamilton Project released, there's a great idea uh, for how to kind of jumpstart this whole process, and that would be done with a grant program uh, run, administered by the federal government. With the nation still trying to recover from the Great Recession, now is a really good time to invest in upgrading the skills of our labor force. As a country, we all benefit from a, a series of policies that make our economy very dynamic. Uh, and in the process of that dynamism, we s sometimes people's uh, skills become less valuable. Uh, and in order to have a fair society, uh, it ha there has to be a system by which the people through no, who no fault of their own lose out on this uh, due to this dynamism are able to refresh their skills and continue to participate. And if we want to have uh, continue to pursue these dynamic policies that allow the country to change and new industries to develop, it's going to be crucial that everyone uh, can participate in the uh, growth, and job training is a central component of that. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.